And we begin with two significant stories tonight. WNBA star Brittany Griner is now just hours from landing in San Antonio, Texas, after being imprisoned for nearly 10 months in Russia. The White House secured her release as part of a prisoner swap with a notorious Russian arms dealer. We're going to have much more on her release just ahead. We're also following a major development in one of the Justice Department's high-profile investigations into Donald Trump. A new report from The Washington Post says prosecutors have asked a judge to, quote, hold Trump's office in contempt of court for failing to fully comply with a May subpoena to return all classified documents in his possession. On Wednesday, we learned the former president's lawyers recently discovered two more documents with classified markings among Trump's items. Those records were found in a storage unit not far from Mar-a-Lago. Meanwhile, Special Master Raymond Deary's review of the material seized from Trump's Florida club is officially over. An appeals court shut down that review today after Trump declined to challenge its earlier ruling on the matter. Now DOJ's prosecutors can get to work sifting through evidence that before today was off limits. And in yet another case involving Donald Trump, one of his allies spent the day in an Atlanta courtroom testifying under oath. A source tells NBC News that former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn appeared before the grand jury investigating whether Trump tried to interfere with the 2020 election in Georgia. And as we follow those developments, a cornucopia, if you will, we're also keeping a close eye on Brittany Griner's long-awaited return home after her release today from prison in Russia. NBC News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Andrea Mitchell has more on that story. Do you know where I'm heading to? No. No? No. 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 You fly back home. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. After months of being unjustly detained in Russia, held under intolerable circumstances, Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones, and, uh, and she should have been there all along. President Biden alongside Griner's wife, Sherelle, after both talked to Brittany from the Oval Office. And so today I'm just standing here um, overwhelmed with emotions, but the most important emotion that I have right now is just sincere gratitude um, for President Biden and his entire administration. Griner was exchanged on the tarmac in the United Arab Emirates for notorious Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. Boot also seen on state TV flying back to Russia. He says, they took me right out of my cell. Widely known as the merchant of death, he had served 11 years of a 25-year sentence in the U.S., but left behind another American the U.S. says is wrongfully detained in Russia. Businessman and former Marine Paul Whelan, who's already served four years of a 16-year sentence, charged with spying, which the U.S. strongly denies. This administration from the start has uh, been really committed to seeing um, wrongful detainees come home from around the world, uh, not just from Russia. But it doesn't give them the power just to make that happen. They can't just wave a magic wand, regardless of what level of commitment is here. Brittany Griner will be home for the holidays with her family. The United States is still working to free other Russian prisoners, including former Marine Paul Whelan. Whelan's family was notified ahead of Griner's release. NBC News reports, quote, the Kremlin ultimately gave the White House the choice of either Griner or no one after different options were proposed. Let's discuss with former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, who runs an organization specifically focused on releasing U.S. prisoners in other countries. He was part of the effort to get Brittany Griner released. Governor, it is good to see you. I'm hoping you can draw back the curtain for us. What can you tell us about how we got here? Well, you got to give the White House credit and the president's team, the National Security Council, that basically have been pushing very hard with combinations to get both Whelan and Griner uh, with the options. But then in the end, I think uh, it was Putin who didn't want to give the president a, a victory and decided that it was just going to be Reiner. Now, this is unfortunate because I've been working on these cases like for Whelan for about four years in the Trump administration proposing alternatives. Now, I'm not negotiating directly. My, I call myself a catalyst pushing both sides, meeting both sides, went to Russia twice, uh, met with the embassy in Washington, met with White House officials, who I think did a good job, especially uh, John Finer at the National Security Council. But uh, this is good news. Uh, she's going home to her parents, 
very effective public media campaign by her attorney, her representative, her spouse, her father, uh, the WNBA. So they should get some credit for this, too. Absolutely. We're going to be talking with one of them in just a minute. You know, it, it is our sense, of course, that Russia is watching how this is received at home. To what degree and what is it that they are watching for? Well, obviously, they know that uh, Brittany Griner was an icon, a basketball star, an African-American woman uh, with a huge following. So obviously, the Russians wanted to get something substantial in return. And they did with uh, with Victor Boot, who, who's a very bad guy. I know a lot of people are making excuses. He served 11 years, that he wasn't a security threat. No, he's a bad guy. But you have to make deals like this to get American hostages back. Our military, uh, innocent people wrongfully detained like uh, Paul Whelan. So, uh, you know, this is the ugly side of diplomacy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the fact that this deal was made humanitarian, prison to prison, despite the terrible relationship we have with Russia right now, indicates I, I'm an optimist. I think we're going to get uh, Paul Whelan out, and, and I think it'll be sooner than later. I've said by the end of this year, I took a gamble. We got uh, Trevor Reed, a Marine, out about four months ago in an exchange with Russia. Now Brittany Griner and then Whelan, and there's several others. Alicia, there's about three others we're working on, Americans that are, that are detained in Russia, including a POW named Gerdy Karpasi in the Russian-occupied uh, section of Ukraine. So, you know, the, the task, and, and I think the, the, the Whelan family have been remarkably resilient. They've been gracious, uh, patient, but I, I feel for Paul. Uh, but I think the news soon will be will be good. I, I'm an optimist, and I think he'll be out. Right back in October, early October, you didn't want to prognosticate, but you did say that you were cautiously optimistic that they would both be out by the end of this year. Where do the efforts then to bring Wheel and Home go from here? Well, um, there's a channel that the White House has with the Russians that uh, it, it is a very official secretive channel. Uh, I don't want to get into deliberations on mm -hmm. the multiple options that have been proposed, but I do think that it's going to be another prisoner exchange uh, for Paul Whelan. The, the Russians are tough negotiators. They're not going to give them up for free. So we should expect uh, negotiations in the center on prisoner exchange individuals that the Russians want. Uh, now, Putin looks good uh, with his uh, constituency in Russia because he got booed out. So uh, and President uh, Biden has done a good job and uh, it's worked out well uh, to bring Brittany home. But we can't forget the Marine. We can't forget the military guy who's not as glamorous as uh, Brittany. So uh, we full speed ahead, the government and private groups like mine. Uh, we work together, but I don't work for the government. They don't tell me what to do. Uh, and, and so we're going to continue our efforts cooperating with our government that has done a good job. But uh, at the same time, we work for the families, my foundation, the families of hostages. They're the ones that we respond to. So um, in the days ahead, uh, we got to go full speed ahead and try to make that goal by the end of the year of have Paul Whelan and other Americans in Russia. But also, Alicia, there's some in Iran. There's four there. There's Four in Venezuela. We've got about 60 around the world. We should bring all our hostages home, but it's going to cost. It's not going to be easy. But let's concentrate now on Whelan and, and see if we can bring him home to his family and to his country. Former Governor Bill Richardson, thank you so much for making time for us tonight. The last thing before we go tonight, Latina Equal Pay Day. You might recall March 15th symbolizes the day of the year that women finally catch up to what men made the previous year. But today, December 8th, is when Latino workers finally earn what white, non-Hispanic men earned in 2021 alone. Do the math. That's almost an extra year of work to earn the same amount. The National Women's Law Center reports 
full-time Latino workers earn just 57 cents for every dollar the men make. And for part-time workers, it's just 54 cents. That is a 46 cent wage gap. It's nearly $1.2 million less over a 40-year career. So at this rate, a Latina has to work until she is nearly 90 years old to earn what a white, non-Hispanic man makes by the time he's 60. And sadly, thanks in part to the pandemic, these women are doing worse than they were before. Last year, Latina Equal Pay Day came nearly two months earlier, on October 21st. The Institute for Women's Policy Research has some suggestions for turning things around. They include offering living wages for the care and service sector jobs, typically filled by women, better access to higher paying jobs, support for unions, and a tougher fight against discrimination. Some in Congress are trying to do just that. Last year, New Mexico Congresswoman Teresa Legere Fernandez introduced the Latina Equal Pay Day resolution. And today, she and her fellow Latinas in Congress posted this. We introduced the Latina Equal Pay Day resolution to bring to light that Latinas play a huge role in our economy. We do the work even as we are undervalued and underpaid. So what do mis hermanas say? Latinas help build this country and that work should be reflected in their paycheck. Latinas are a critical component of America's workforce. Latinas deserve equal pay. We clean, cook, and care for others. Latinas deserve equal pay. We are some of the hardest working people in the workforce. Latinas deserve equal pay. Latinas know we all deserve equal pay now. Ahora. The hope, of course, is that we'll be marking Latina Equal Pay Day a whole lot earlier in the year. As President Biden tweeted just a few hours ago, equal pay makes all of us stronger.